that, and here we yeah. all just what it, I want whatever. Go ahead, we're on. Go so, ahead. Sister, no, sister, how many years have been oh, over seventy years? Easy in the church. Yeah, yeah, really over seventy years. Yes. Speak up, so don't whisper. Yes. Don't whisper, cause I got to get it yeah. on here. Okay. Okay. I'm, it's on roll. Cause I'm eighty three now. Okay. Uh, greetings. Um, I'm Dr. Marque Staples, pastor of Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. And man, I am blessed to be here on this November the 1st to share with an, not only an awesome woman of God, but the member who has been the member the longest at Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. And so we are very excited. I'm going to introduce to some and to others, um, Sister Patricia Smith, actually trustee, head trustee um, Smith to you guys. She's been a member of Mount Zion for over 70 years. Yes. Um, she began at the old Mount Zion. I'll let her tell you the, the story, which is not really an old Mount Zion. It's just a 501 Cleveland Avenue, the original Mount Zion, 1928, that's still restored, that now is our now second campus. And so we're excited about that and, and the Center of Hope, because that's what it's going to be, where we're going to do a lot of outreach. And uh, we're grateful for her and for her leadership. And now I'm going to just turn it over to trustee sister Patricia Smith. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, I've been a member of Mount Zion since I was probably five or six years old, and uh, there were five of us. Uh, my mom and dad belonged to the church. My dad was a deacon there, and my mother was in everything that went in Mount Zion like I am today. Uh, my, uh, I think I said my dad was a deacon, my mother was a uh, missionary society. She belonged to the choir. She belonged to the usher board. She was the head cook and she bought a washer, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. her. But she did everything there was to be done in the church as most people did. Now, church was different then because everybody did something in the church. Yeah. And without even being asked, it was more volunteers there. And before me, I have this book, and I'm looking at some of these older members, and I can just about tell you something about everybody on this page. This is Birdie, the mother of the church right here. Birdie Mae Anderson. Yes. Yeah. She was Anderson before she married uh, her husband, uh, James Williams. James Williams. Yes. So she's still the mother of the church. Yes, yeah, she was not then. No, but that's the lady who now is, who's yes, 96. absolutely, yes. She's, yes. Yeah. She's 96 years old, and she will be 97. As a matter of fact, the day before um, the church anniversary on, in 2023, July the 8th, 2023, she'll be 97, and we're going to roll right into it. What yeah. day was that? July the 8th. Our oh, church okay. anniversary is July 9th. Yeah. yeah, okay. Okay, this is Mrs. Alexander Lulaby. She lived up on Monroe Street. Bertie lived on Monroe Street. Uh, Sierra Alexander didn't. Right now, that's all that lived on Monroe Street. But each one of these people, this man, Mr. Bertha, was a superintendent of the Sunday school wow. for years until he died. And Sister Bertha, uh, Ruby Bostick, she worked uh, as, she was in the Women's Guild. She as my mother, she was the mission. And like I said, everybody probably on this page and these pages thereafter was in something in the church. Wow. You didn't have to ask people to do what they wanted to do. And uh, we would have dues in, in, in the little organizations and it would probably be a dollar. Mm -hmm. That's all we had. <laughs> Sometimes we didn't have that. Uh, like my family, my dad never worked in the coal mines, which was the high-paying jobs. Yeah. He worked, uh, my dad was a house painter, and uh, he uh, just did odd, odd jobs. But anyway, uh, my mother and my dad paid what we called dues. Then we didn't pay, they didn't, you know, emphasize uh, tithes then. It was just tithing came later on because I guess back then pastors, uh, they didn't teach like we're being taught now, which is why I, I'm enjoying the Bible now more because I'm being able to really understand the Bible. Back then, 
I guess the preacher could tell you anything. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, Sarah Alexander, Gay Armstead, Gay live right directly behind the new church where we are right now. Wow. And she passed away probably 10 years ago. And that's on Maple Avenue, yes. That's no, the, no. The, uh, the, McKinney. No. Yes, McKinney. McKinney. Yes, McKinney. yes, yes, McKinney, McKinney. Street. Laura Beans left, moved to uh, Cleveland. Mazella Burns. Mazella Burns was a, a beautician. She lived on Monroe Street. Wow. Virginia Kane, at one time her sister played the piano. Virginia loved to sing. Loved to sing. Uh, Mrs. Carter and, Miss, and Mr. Carter, they own the funeral, a funeral home. We used to have two black funeral really? homes. Yes. Wow. Okay. You know where my brother lives? Yes, yes. The house, there was a house across the street going up the hill. That was Nun and, Gra Nun and Gravely Funeral Home. And they owned that. Miss Anna Cottrell, she died real early. I don't remember her. Miss Cruz. Miss Cruz was a long time member of the church. Quentin Dalton and, uh, and, uh, can't think of her name right now. Quentin on the bar downtown. Okay. <laughs> so that was the previous TGs. <laughs> no, 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 no. Downtown, uh, let's start at St. Peter's Church yes. where the post office is. Yes. What's, what's that, Madison? Madison, yeah. Straight down Madison Street. Uh, all this is torn down where the new building is right there. From that new building, that used to be the Fairmont theater where they put that building on down was shoes which was uh uh quentin dalton's place okay then melvin williams place that was a bar wow. i know these bars because i was <laughs> and these are all mount zion members that own these right oh yeah th no not every one of them but quentin did own uh that one yeah but quentin was at church and so was miss uh, <laughs> so was helen her name was helen dalton and uh, one of our members, uh, Caretha Hall, worked for Quentin because jobs then, we didn't have jobs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Why didn't you guys have jobs? Why? There were no jobs around here, and we were just coming out of segregation. Oh. Yeah. Gloria Rogers. Is this in the 30s? Or Glory what year was this coming out? 30s, 40s? 50s. No, fifties and sixties. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Gloria Rogers, Hattie Rogers. I'm sure yes. she was the first person to work at Murphy's Five and first black person to work wow. at Murphy's Five and Dime. Yeah. yeah. Where was that? You know where they turned it. The building is still there. What is? You know where that little. Uh, Veterans Place is right yeah, there. Yeah, that little Veterans park. Yeah. That next building, that's connected. Into, into town, toward the courthouse. Yes. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was Murphy's. Okay. It was a big five and dime store there. Then uh, Ray's Jewelry. Uh, it was just stores all up and down the street. Amazing. All kind of shoe stores, uh, uh, department stores, Jones's department store. Heartless department store. Uh, on the other side, they had Mons. They had uh, Levine's. And these were what we thought were very expensive. We went to Murphy's. Let me ask you, <laughs> while you're at it, you said we're coming out of segregation. How was the shopping back then? How did that work? In what way? In, in segregation-wise. I mean, was there... We could shop. Okay. But we could go into the stores to buy mm -hmm. whatever you go in, you bought what you wanted, and you come out. There were places in Fairmont that we could not go in. Uh, then when it started to lift a little bit, uh, Hagen's, you know where the historical... Yeah, next to the courthouse. That next little building right there used to be an ice cream shop. Okay. We could go in and buy a cone of ice cream, but we could not sit down. 
Whoa. We could not go into the Lee Theater. They had the Lee Theater, the Virginia Theater, and Fairmont Theater. Where were they? Along that main strip? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Are they still standing? Nope. Okay. They've been nope. torn down. The Fairmont was the last one, and he's out at uh, Tiger. So What's in their place now, if I were going to go take a picture of it? The new uh, West Virginia building. Okay. That's where the uh, All that was. Fairmont Theater was. Okay. In fact, the Fairmont Theater and up above there was Hermosella's Market and some other little store in that area. Uh, but all of that's gone now. Okay. Yeah. That's why we're talking to you. <laughs> Sister, Sister Smith, while, during that period, um, what, I, what I love and what I've heard you say is about how the church spiritually, how did you guys get through that period? Even though like, you couldn't eat ice cream, at the place you could buy, you couldn't go into the theaters, and but still, how did you guys still keep the faith? And you you still, how did you do that? And you, you guys didn't get better. You guys got better. How did you? How did the church respond? That was a way of life, Pastor. Why would you be bitter? Or just, just let's just take this neighborhood up here. Yeah. Everybody was poor. Mm -hmm. But my mother could stand. On her porch, I, the porch wasn't even there, and hollered her best friend over there, send me a cup of sugar, and she would get it, or a stick of oleo. They didn't even call it margarine, they called it oleo. And that's the way we did it. it the neighborhood raised the kids. Mama, we never locked these doors until later years. Was it a mixed neighborhood, or were that, was that segregated? Mostly black. Uh, Stella DeRocher and her mom lived right down the road down there. Stella didn't know where she was, but she was an Italian. Okay. Um, there was another white family that lived down, but mostly black. And this hill was called Shady Side. On this side and on the other side of the hill, that going that way. Um, we were just in and out of each other's homes. Sometimes we would come home already full. We'd have already eaten at somebody else's house. That's just the way it was. You know, you just go home go home and go to bed. That's what they would tell us. You know? <laughs> the first TV that was up on this hill was a little 13-inch, and it was the Terry's. <clears throat> Their house is gone now, and I'm all the way off to the church. It's okay. This is okay. The Terry's had... Can't remember that about nine or ten kids. And they came from Grantown up here. Reverend Terry. The Reverend Terry worked in the mines. And I never knew Miss Terry when she was not with child. <laughs> <laughs> she died in childbirth her last month. <sighs> but they had the first little TV. Reverend Terry worked at Midnight shift. Mm -hmm. When we would come home from school up the Long Hill, yeah, we would stop at the Terry's and watch the soap operas, <laughs> <laughs> and we could stay there as long as we didn't wake Reverend Terry up. If we woke Reverend Terry up, we had to get out of there. <laughs> Where did he pastor? Do you remember? He uh, he was uh, apostolic, pastored in Clarksburg, and. There was a little church over on Norville Street, mm -hmm. and I don't know if that little building is still there or not. In Clarksburg? No, right here. Right here okay. in Fairmont. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he passed it there for a minute. But his kids were, the boys played football, and this was after integration, which helped a little bit with integration because those boys, they were big boys, and they mm -hmm. could play football. So that kind of eased. eased the kids have more problems now than we had when they actually integrated schools. First thing, first reason was they didn't want us there, and we didn't want to be there. Exactly. All we wanted was equal. Yeah. If if the government had made everything equal, I doubt if we'd be. Uh, integrated right now. I doubt very seriously. But <clears throat> and it's okay that it was done the way it was, even though we had all those problems, but 
we did not want to go in Dunbar, Dunbar, first to the 12th grade, all of the little places like Carolina, uh, Berrickville, a uh, few people in Mannington, Monongah, Mononga, all of these, little, Dakota, all these little mining camps, mm -hmm. after seventh grade, they, they had grade schools up to sixth grade, then they poured into Dunbar. Best education we ever had was right there in Dunbar. Were there any white kids in Dunbar? Dunbar? Before segregation? Right. No. No. Okay. Uh-uh. No. We would get the books from West Fairmont or East Fairmont or whatever in, into Dunbar. That was our free books. They would get their brand new books. Mm -hmm. And you guys would get their used books. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But at that point in time, we were glad to have them, you know. But when Dunbar, when they integrated and Dunbar closed, every teacher in Dunbar was working with master's degrees. Wow. But not in the white schools. And only a few of them got jobs. Wow. Only a few of them got jobs. So, yeah. Mr. Smith, now Dunbar, can you tell, tell um, well, some stories you frequently told me is how the Durdens, um, when you ate dinner, you guys would walk to Sunday school and to church. Is that, did I? Yeah. We so walked could, right down uh, Odell Street. But this is, this is Sterling. Was it still called? Now, here's the thing. This is Odell. It was always Odell. Sterling came from 250 up to where you could go around that way. Okay. Same piece it's, of concrete, but they call it something different? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's still, it, when you turn off down, it's still Sterling Road, but Sterling Road comes up to the top of the, that first hill, yeah. but it goes back around that way. Okay. Like you're going towards Houston's house. Yeah. 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 You come straight, then you're on Odell Street. Yeah. Ask me some more questions. So Dunbar was um, literally, do you know how they, how did, how did Reverend Williams decide um, before they decide to put the church where it was. I mean, it's it's interesting because it's really smack dab across the street from Dunbar. Was Dunbar here first? I don't know. I was going to ask you that. That was our next question. I don't know that. So 1928. It, be a it was 1928. Dunbar? Well, Arch, no, Mount Zion. Mount Zion. I mean, it, 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 there's a cornerstone on uh, Dunbar. We're going to find out. We'll talk yeah. to Trustee Houston about that. Yeah, he yeah. should know that. He should know that. I really should know it, but I don't. Tell me some more about the segregation era. Uh, how was the church involved with that or not in what way? We were not involved except to follow the law. Okay. Uh, churches are still segregated. Many, yeah. Yeah. And it's only because uh, there's a, just a sprinkling of people that will come to a, a black Baptist church or a sprinkling that will go to a white church. Because the, the uh, you said to me one time, uh, I like this church because the pastor allows me to do what I want to do. I can move around. How many white churches do you go to that? Well, not many in West Virginia. That's why I'm where I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I do want to clarify that as pastor. <laughs> what she's referring to she got to do is she got to worship freely, clapping her hands. <laughs> well, we're talking know. about the church. So yeah. Well, let's yeah, but you, you, you yeah, clarify. Clarify. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to. Yeah, because it, it, it's interesting because what Sister Griggs was saying was that she, you know, it was very different. She during, likes to shout. And yeah. When my mother and my parents were coming up, if the preacher was really, the spirit was high, I put it like that. Yeah. I had an uncle who was a preacher. The reason my mother's in West Virginia, he was a preacher. Before then was a staunch deacon. Yeah. I've seen my my uncle walk those pews that's Woo! right down there. <laughs> you talking about, you, you like to move? If he, if the spirit hit him, I'm telling you, he would walk those pews back down and back up again. 
I'm talking about the backs of them. Never <laughs> fail. Never <laughs> fail. You used to, it would scare us, really. But people would actually shout in church. And the closest I've been to that in my later years is in, in Denise's church. Hey, yeah. those people will shout. They really <laughs> run around that church. That's and, in Connecticut, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I always felt like in the South, mm -hmm. you got good church. In the South, across the South. This is not the South. In this <laughs> area, We're kind the of middle part. The middle part, yeah. People don't care about church. They don't get into the spirit. Uh -huh. You go on up, then it's almost like it is in the south. Then it, up in those churches up there, you can go at any given church, and the spirit is so high yeah. in there. And these women shout and carry on, and and to keep them from hurting themselves. I and I've never seen a person in the spirit hurt themselves. Never. But they will form a circle yeah. around the person. If they did something like that, if somebody jumped up and went shouting in Mount Zion, they would stop service. <laughs> <laughs> they would. These people don't know anything about. Bertie does. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But these people don't know anything about how we came up yeah. in church. That... Over on that side of Old Mount Zion, it was two pews and the front pew, all deacons. Mm -hmm. yeah. All deacons. On the other side were the trustees. Mm -hmm. All of the teachers, not all of them, most of the teachers uh, who taught at Dunbar, they were either at Mount Zion or they were at Trinity. Mm -hmm. That's even before Morning Star, wasn't it? No, Morning Star had been there. They'd been there. Morning Star used to be out on uh, Robinson Street. And Robinson Street is, you know, the alley in front of our church? Yes. Just if you keep following that all the way out, that's Robinson Street. Robinson Street, okay. Mm -hmm. and, and Morning Star had a little tiny church there. When they build this church that they're in now, I forget the band's name. The way they paid for that church was he died and left them everything and it paid for their church. Mm -hmm. So they were blessed too, just like we were. Mm -hmm. that we were because when we uh, built this church, we had the money to build the church, but we would have had a mortgage. Mm -hmm. yeah. But those same brothers, I guess, when they, they bought the church and it paid for... Our church. Our church is really supposed to be larger than it is. Uh, and Reverend Wright was, was the pastor there at the time that we actually broke ground and start to uh, build. Reverend Hickerson is the one who laid out the plans. And I don't know where those plans... I thought Eugene Payne had them in his house, but they weren't there. Or they said they were not there when uh, he died. But our church is supposed to be lar a lot larger than than it is. But God knows best. If it was That's bigger, yeah. then we would have bigger bills. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Let me ask you, now, in, in my research and in some of the old newspaper stuff, I found, now this was back in, from 22 backward, and so you might have just have heard about it or remembered, uh, that it seemed like at one point Mount Zion was meeting on Cherry Street. Cherry Street? The, uh, there were a bunch of newspapers, you know, the, how the Sunday service used to have, if every church would say, we're service is so-and-so, the message will be so-and-so. That was in all these clippings, and several of them were Cherry Street, Mount Zion at Cherry Street. And I, just just for maybe a... I don't know the name of the street, but there was a, a alley where St. Peter's is. Standard Furniture Company was on Jackson Street, the same as uh, St. Peter's. Behind there was an alleyway. Okay. And that's where the first church. First Mount Zion? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can we find that from what she just described one day when the it's first, yeah, yes. Okay. We can we can we can and it, it was interesting too, Sister Smith, in the, the history that we did, Mount Zion, um, Sister Arnold said that um, I'm trying to remember her name. 
Um, she was the first African American to work for the justice system. She was the first black clerk or something. Um, um, so we've had some really just. Um, that was her aunt. That was her aunt. Her, her, her name, name was Aretha Foster. Her, oh yes, Aretha, 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 Aretha Williams. Yes, to yes. begin with, yes. and then he died, and uh, that was Lawrence's aunt. Yes, Aretha. In Tennessee is Lawrence's heart and sister. Sister, yes, yeah, sister and brother. Yeah. Yes, uh, and 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 also um, she was she was also saying that is that the same one who was also our church clerk for fifty something years? As yes. Well? Yeah. yeah. So what's the name again? Aretha. Aretha um, William Williams Foster. Foster. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I think I'm gonna find her here in a minute. Yeah, she she was and um, uh, sister Smith. What do you recall about Mount Zion, I guess, in that 50s, 60s, 70s, before moving to, what stood out most for you, I guess, when you think of Mount Zion, 60s, 70s, that yes, Sister Aretha L. Williams, yeah, mm -hmm. which is Sister now Aretha's um, um, aunt, Hardin's aunt, aunt, yeah, yeah. with her aunt, yeah. Aretha in Tennessee, mother, and Lawrence's mother, was her sister. Yes, yes. And they had another sister, uh, Rebecca. It seemed like it was another one. I can't remember. This is a trustee that taught me what I know. Sister Smith, that's another interesting thing. Back then, um, it wasn't until what year did we get our first um, female trustee. It, I think you said it wasn't until later. You... You became a trustee, but it was all men. I was the first one. She was the first, yeah. Do you remember what year that was? <laughs> but it's been 50 years it's that been. she's been a trustee, and, and so Trustee to... Strickland is the one who trained her. Yeah, Strickland and and Clarence Foster. So uh, 50 years from now, backward would be, would be what? Uh, 50 years from now, backward would make that 70s. Um, yeah, that would be Some 70s. Early yeah, 70s? Early 70s or something. So, okay. Yeah. That's not right. That is probably true because I went to work at uh, Westinghouse then in 1962. And it was a little while after that that I became a trustee. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that was in my late 20s, early 30s. When you became a trustee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and they just told me I was going to be a trustee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sister Smith, what, what were, like, back then, um, qualifications, um, can you just say, I'm going to be a trustee or I'm going to be a deacon? I mean, back then. In oh, time, no. Oh, no. Could you, deacons, was, deacons. I guess the pastor would pick them out or ask them if they wanted to be a deacon. But what these deacons had to do, they went through studying. Yeah. And they had to go before a council of yeah. other deacons. Yeah. And at, they asked them all kind of biblical questions. And they had to pass. Yeah. Now, I don't know what had happened. Yeah. And you said you guys had two roles. What were the, what were the men and women like back in... in at, then Mount Zion, I mean, what's, what's sort of stood out when you think about Mount Zion, 60s, 70s, 80s, before we moved from um, Cleveland Avenue? And if you could t transition why we moved from Cleveland, if it was so great, why the move to um, 135 Maple? So tell us about what, it, what are some of the things that stood the out. The major thing for our move was trying to get off of that dangerous highway. Mm -hmm. Was it always that dangerous? Yeah. Yeah, cars are faster now and there's more of them, but it was still a danger because part of that sidewalk is gone because they have, uh, I was looking at it the other day, uh, they paved over part of it, plus they put that little flower bed there. We had a full sidewalk okay. there, but it was still dangerous. That we had to watch for the kids, you know, when mm -hmm. when they would come out of the uh, of the church, and nobody ever got hit or anything like that. And normally after church, if like people would do now, if they see you trying to cross the street, mm -hmm. they will stop and let you 
and because we parked over in the uh, school. Yeah, yeah. The park parking. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What stands out? Yeah. <laughs> let me see. Uh, let me ask you. If we're looking at these pictures of these old ladies, what would stand out to you? These people were going to church. This is where they went to church. Yeah. My mother never went to church without a hat. Yeah. Ever. Hats on, yeah. All of these women got hats on. And that quit in the 60s pretty much. Well, not in black churches. They kind of kept it up. Yeah. Yeah. It I, got to a point, you know, I would, whenever I would go someplace or, or any of my yeah, sisters would go, we would buy my mother a hat. My mother yeah. could wear a hat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and most of those women could wear hats. But uh, you just dressed to go to church. You didn't come yeah. to church like some people come to church now. And it isn't because they don't have it. It's just that they they have they don't respect. We we learn to respect going to church. You go to church. You dress nice. Yeah. You acted a certain way in church. And my kids rip and run around in church. Oh, my mother would jerk you up. <laughs> you just didn't do that. But you teach your kids. I, I admire Janice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She she makes her little boy sit there. And it's not hard for him to sit there because this is how she is training him. Yeah. And I told her that. I told her, I said, you know, I, I really admire you for bringing your child up and I said I know times are different and they are different and everybody think they got to do what everybody else does but hmm. there's a certain amount of respect that I feel like we should have for the church and I don't mind uh, jeans on one Sunday that, that's okay I don't nice jeans don't come in there looking like you know <laughs> Jesus. Like you just finished digging the ditch or something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was getting ready to tell you something else. Ask me a question. While yeah, I, I was going to... The other thing I was going to ask you... Um, also, too, um, um, even the men, if you look at the men, even in our booklet, they always were dressed you in suit and ties, and they were... Always. They dressed... Um, and I, I think it had a lot to do, even what you said about... I mean, I can't even imagine what it felt like to go and be able to buy an ice cream cone but not be able to sit at the table. Oh, you still back there? <laughs> or to go... Um, Where did you into, come from? So that we had the same thing, too, but I, I just couldn't imagine. I just couldn't imagine that because we didn't get to those areas where we couldn't, but how you guys um, still continue. Because when I read things that Mount Zion did, um, there weren't any, per se, marches, but you guys stood strong for what you believed in. And you didn't allow um, for racism or negativity to cause you to become bitter. And I think um, I'm just amazed. It at, wasn't at a distraction. Yet. Yeah. It was a way of life. Yeah. We knew what we could do and what we could not do. And that was the way it was with black people everywhere. Yeah. Now, when when they integrated, it started to to water down. I'll use that term, water down. And we got to do more things. But even when I went to work, can you imagine a black woman supervising white men? What was that like? <laughs> well, it really wasn't as bad as, nobody wanted me to do it, but... I'm that kind of person. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try it anyway. I had good bosses. One, my manager at the time that I took the job, uh, he was from New York, mm -hmm. and of course things were a little bit different in New York. You know, uh, it wasn't quite as tight as it is. And he said, uh, "You have," he said. You're black, you're a woman, and it was something else I should never have forgotten it. You have those things in your corner. Wow. 
And he said, use them if you, want, if you need to. Because even though you got a person here that's really nice, you could, I could walk in the cafeteria to get somebody or something and I might hear a snide remark or something like that. But you have to keep your head up and keep it moving. And I wasn't afraid. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things you had to make sure that you were not afraid or that you were not showing that you were afraid. I had the occasion to tell one guy, I said, look, I don't know you, and guess what? You don't know me, and you don't know who I know. <laughs> so you better be cool. <laughs> yeah. And another thing, I had to learn the union book. I learned that union book just like I studied that Bible. Yeah. I had to know what I could do and what I could not do. Because, As a supervisor. Yeah. Right. Because everybody was watching for me to make a mistake. One time I was talking to a girl and I just put my hand on the shoulder like that. She reported me. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> wow. Couldn't believe it. She don't have any business putting her hand on me. And we were just carrying on a... I wasn't telling her to do anything. I wasn't instructing her anything. We were just talking. Mm -hmm. So it, it it was hard, but it wasn't hard because I, I didn't have a good sense to be afraid because I knew somebody mm -hmm. up there was watching me. <laughs> but it, it my job really, in the years later, because I was a supervisor for... I worked 35 years. I was a supervisor for 20, 25 of those years. Wow. And you retired when? In uh, 60... My mother died in 59. 57. I took an early retirement. Okay, because I thought Cause I, thought I heard you starting. say you started in 62. Yeah. Yeah. So you wouldn't have retired in 57 from that job. I only had one job. Oh, well, I had two jobs. <laughs> well, but if you start with 60, it, not, no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Uh, I, that's why uh, yeah, I only get it straight. Right, you're right. Well, 77? No, wait a minute. Let me get my years straightened out here. My mother passed in 90. Okay. Nine, 97. 97. Okay, that's yeah. That's different than 57. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, ask me something else. I can Sister Smith, as I just, um, I've been through this, um, just being the pastor now um, for five years. I've just, um, I'm just in awe when I look at these pictures. Um, the Willing Workers, the Nest Hill Singers, the Missionary Society, the Senior Junior Usher Board, um, yeah. the... Um, uh, the kitchen committee, um, the, um, I just, I, I'm, and I'm looking, um, here, Sister Foster, I, I'm just amazed, uh, with all that you guys were, were going through. I mean, what did the church mean to you guys back then? What did Mount Zion mean? And what did, because, um, I was told, um, by, um, many others, including Pastor Boyer, Sister, um, Sister Arnold, Sister Lacey, Houston, that Mount Zion was really one of the forerunning churches because over there, even though you guys were sitting right in front of Dunbar, literally that place was packed out. The place Almost was every, every you since, see these people. This place was packed. And we, yeah. We have the original, but this place was packed out. Why did, what was it, um, do you think, um, why, um, the generation that we came up in, Pastor, our parents saw to us going to church, and our parents went to church. And somewhere it got watered down. I don't know where it got watered down, uh, but uh, people stopped going to church, and they stopped sending their kids. I just had this conversation with Janice today. Mm -hmm. Uh 
she tries very hard. I don't know whether you know or not. She tries very she hard does, to yeah. get, get there. Yeah. 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 And to, to get people to help her do. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. They won't. Yeah. She called uh, Terry, Jeremiah, mom, because she wanted to do some things with her son, Jeremiah. Yeah. Jeremiah, uh, and, uh, not Ann, uh, uh, Nala's, Nala's son, son. Yeah. and her son. She can't get any reception. She just yeah. went <laughs> yeah. to Nala's and, and got Nala's son. She said, Miss Pat, I don't know what's going on. I said, I wish I could tell you. Yeah. Do you think some of it is that West Virginia insider outsider thing? Because no. What is that? Well, I'm I, I'm white. I came back to West Virginia, and and you just we we couldn't plug in anywhere. We went to churches for a long time. Want to go to dinner after church? No, we're busy. Want to? I mean, Rick and I, we couldn't get no, you know, couldn't make friends, couldn't get plugged in, and and you guys, you know, you know, you're wide open. So you know it. But I, that's and and when he came to work for NASA, he said that that they said that the people who've lived here all the time, kind of family, and the, it's not that they don't like it, it's just they're busy with their own people, and they just really don't yeah. have much time to open up to other people. And Janice is a newcomer too. I wonder how much of it might just be this is our little thing, and uh, who are y'all? We don't need you anyway. No, that leads me to the next question, though, Sister Smith. I don't think it was what what was it that made you guys? Um, I think you know when I talk with this generation, even when I was growing up as a kid, even though it wasn't mine, I think that was across the country. We really loved it. the church was where we went to get re-energize, refocus, mm -hmm. and sometimes when we felt broken, we go to the church to let our tears out, mm -hmm. and uh, does, they said sometimes we wouldn't cry in front of white people or whatever, but we would come there and cry, just boo-hoo cry and shout and scream, and um, we get encouragement, we get the word, we, we sing ourselves out of it. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe, Sister Smith, you could tell us about, you know, so, but now, you know, um, because when I think about just the, those, those saints at Mount Zion and the ones who are still here, Yourself, Sister Lacey, uh, Mother Birdie, and, and God bless them in heaven, Mo uh, Mother Fox, and Sister, um, um, you know I'm talking about, Sister um, Steve. Um, Sister Steve, but no, um, Sister, um, your cooking buddy. Hollis? Uh, Sister Hollis. Hollis. Uh, when I just think about Brother Dirt, and when I think about those guys, what, you know, what was it that made you guys, and, and what was it like there at Mount Zion? Um, and why was it so, why was it packed, uh, other than, well, it was there. There was an expectation. Do we not have expectations, or have we lowered our expectations as a as not just Mount Zion, but even the church as a whole? It's a lost generation out there, Pastor. Mm -hmm. I mean, totally, totally lost. Just my family; those kids right down the road down there. Were they raised in church? Yes. If you had anything to do with Andy Durden, you went to church. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that discipline is not there anymore. Yeah. It is not there. You see all these young folks in this choir? Yeah. That's the uh, they were actually there. Yeah. Yeah. We were, I'm, I'm in there somewhere. I can't, say, can't carry a tune in a wheelbarrow. But it didn't matter what you could sing. You could open your mouth. Yeah, you're going to belong to the choir. Yeah, you're going to go to BTU. What is, now, BTU, is that like a... Um, is that Baptist like a, Training. That, I thought it was the biggest business organization. What is BTU? Could Baptist you? Training Union. So, yeah, I remember BTU. <laughs> it was Sunday school at night. Sunday school, that's what, yeah. yeah. BTU, but was that something that we just said, hey, if you want to, you can, or was that something that people just came to, BTU? No, because... We were kids and pastors. Let's look, let's look at it like this. On Sunday afternoon, especially in the summertime, you, you go to Sunday school, you go to church, go to the <laughs> afternoon service. Then you come home for 15 minutes and you got to go back to church again. Now, would you have wanted to, if you didn't have somebody to say, you're getting out of here. <laughs> you would not have gone either. Yeah. It's the parenting that we don't have mm -hmm. now. It's the leadership in the home that we... 
kids and I, I feel sorry for school teachers now yeah. because they, the parents expect to not do anything to discipline their kids. Mm -hmm. And they send them to the, to the teacher. The teacher can't teach what she went to school to teach because she is making little Johnny sit down or, you know, who's disrupting the class. We do not have any home training. They, these, these parents are kids. Mm -hmm. They don't know how. And I'm not saying that girls didn't get pregnant back then. They did. But those grandkids were in the same house that the mama that went out and got pregnant was. And that grandchild learned the same thing that the mother learned. Yeah. You know? It's not like that anymore. There's no home training. And when I mean home training, we get up in the morning. <clears throat> Before we went to school, we had to make up our beds. We had, and we had a, we didn't live in this house, had a coal stove in the, uh, in the living room. We had to make sure that my mother had fuel, coal, or whatever she was putting in that stove during the day. We did that before we went to school in the morning. We had, uh, uh, Uncle James had a cow. We had to go and move, take the cow out to the field. We had things to do before we walked from here to Dunbar. Every morning. When we come home in the evening, we had to do our chores. Then we sit down, and my mother would sit with us, and we did our homework. Mm -hmm. My mother had a sixth grade education, but I guarantee you, mm -hmm. she could have stood up to and, and talked to Obama yeah. because she read. Mm -hmm. What did she read? They read newspapers? and My mother read books. Wow. She read this, and I've never read it before, she read The Silver Chalice mm. twice. Mm -hmm. She read the Bible from cover to cover three times. Mm. And when my mother was saying amen in church, I know you're right. And she would say, that's in my Bible. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then my dad read. I don't, I'm not sure how far he got in school, but my mother only had a sixth grade education. Yeah. Wow. But she worked, uh, my mother could cook, and she worked for the school system. And I was talking to uh, Hollis's daughter today, and she was talking about my mom. She said, you know, we would run through the halls, but when we got close to that kitchen, we would stop, we would walk. <laughs> <laughs> Because Miss Durden would come hear us out there and she didn't care who we belonged to. And she, that's the way she was. Wow. She, they, they respected her, but they went home with their bellies full. If they didn't have, uh, she thought they didn't have any food at home, she would give it to them mm -hmm. to take home. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so I was going to ask you too. A part of the history, when I look at the old Mount Zion, when you were saying just some of these members, and I'm just glossing this through. This is the way the church basically looked. This is the, um, so this is the, this is um, the, the pulpit, I believe. And um, this is some the, of the, the, some of them are standing on, on the, the on, yeah, okay, and some gotcha. of them are on the ground. Okay, on the on, ground. Yeah, okay, on, on the, the bottom. But, yeah. But I was, here it is again. And, and Sister Smith, I was amazed because even though you talked about educators, there were a lot of people who just had regular high school. Um, so Mount Zion wasn't just with people. Mount Zion had a little bit of everything. I a guess. little bit of everything and a little bit of everybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I could probably go through here and, and pull out the teachers for you. And this, yeah, I believe That's this is Pastor right. Wright. Yeah, Pastor, is. Pastor. I'm going to come back to come back there. But I, I, I was looking. I wish these, all of that had been in color. Yeah. Um, because I, I, I love how um, here's Sister Bland. She uh, lived on Spring Street. Sister her her Johnson. daughter was my science teacher. Wow, science teacher. Yeah. Um, this is um, Carol Woods. Yeah. Um, her mom sang in the choir. Um, now, this is um, Leola Anderson, and this is Mother Birdie. This is younger years because I see mm -hmm. them. 
mm -hmm. younger years. Um, mm -hmm. Matthew Smith. That's Joni's uh, dad. That's yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. yeah. This is um, Matthew Smith is Sister Lacey's dad, and mom. Um, then there's Her mom's not in that in that picture. picture. There's um, Miss Ethel McDaniel's. I think you've yeah. mentioned her in the Tollivers. You've mentioned to me too. Yeah, Wesley Tolliver. Yeah, the Tollivers. Do you know Don Tolliver? Don Tolliver. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. I know Don. Do you? Yeah, real well. Yeah. And, uh, not his first wife. Who was his first wife? Uh. Did you know his second wife? I knew Jonna, the one that just died recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was. Uh, I went to church with them for five years before uh, I. Went oh, to, really? Yeah, before I went to Kingdom, where I bumped into yeah. you before I came down here. Wow, that's yeah. Uh, his first wife, I, I know her. Can't call her name. So right did he, did he used to belong to Mount Zion? Uh uh. Okay. Uh uh. Okay. That's Wesley, and then um, Maddie Woods, and I think you've mentioned Francis Rowland too. <coughs> <coughs> She she was a clerk, uh, the uh, secretary at school. At school, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I'm just throwing out some other names. That, um, <coughs> the daughter. That's my dad. Yeah. Wow. And this is Miss. This is mother and daughter right here. She taught me in the fifth fifth grade. She was a teacher. That's um. Yeah. Um, what page is that on? What page is it? Is it, uh, is it, in, is it indicated that that's your dad? It doesn't say. What page right. is We can it? show you. Well, just tell me what page it is. And there's no page. There's number. no page. It's in the it's in the old <coughs> Mount Zion section, probably. Okay. I'll show you. Color. Got Let's it. See. That's on the left. No, okay. him on the no. He's my dad. Her dad what's he on, got on the tan suit? There's women on the left. Okay, tan suit. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was there with them, and this is Mister Jesse Williams. She had given her mom a birthday party. And my dad walked in there and she looked at my dad. She said, I thought you were dead. <laughs> <laughs> she was so outspoken, uh, but very nice lady. Wow. She retired early to take care of her mom. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Uh huh. Now tell us about a, Deacon Jesse. You 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 mentioned he's Deacon a Jesse. He was a trustee, but and he, a deacon. And a deacon. Mm -hmm. And he he um you said that uh I've heard stories about um, Deacon Jesse Williams, when the doors were open, anything, the doors weren't open, he was always there. Yeah. Doing something. Yeah, he was there, and uh, my dad, yeah. and uh, Percy, and uh, Percy Strickland, and Eugene Payne. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mays was, at when he was in uh, West Virginia, he taught uh, business. Uh, practices at Dunbar. I don't know if there's a picture of him in there. But anyway, <clears throat> he was a chairman of the trustee board. These are more. Here's a... I'm going to show Sister Griggs this picture. Now these are when John... No, this is actually kidding. Old Mount Zion. It looks like it Old is. Mount Zion. Yeah. You see Zion. that cross there? Yes. It had lights in it. I don't yeah. know what happened to it. We, they're still there. That that cross is still there. We have where that. you can screw the light bulbs in. I, I'm not sure it's that that exact one yet, but we uh, did. See I didn't it see that one. Yeah. I saw a cross, but I didn't see that one. Yeah. So th it's it's just amazing just watching even the kids here. They're um, standing right in front of the old Mount Zion. Right. Yeah. There see, we're it was on more the side. sidewalk. That's yeah, what I'm wow. telling you. Yeah. It was it's more. a lot more sidewalk. Yeah, absolutely. Whoa. The sidewalk. Yeah. yeah. They did get cut out some of the mm -hmm. sidewalk. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of sidewalk there. Yep. Yep. And this is actually downstairs in the kitchen. Um, because, Sister Smith, is it true that you were baptized at the Old Mount Zion? Yes. Yeah. And in can you tell pool. them where it was? So did you guys didn't have a baptismal pool, Yes, per we se. did down in the floor. In the floor. And you told me that you don't know how the water got it. There had to be a drain in there. Nobody dipped water out of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, how'd you get in it? Jump? Or was there stairs? Yes, or there's stairs. There's stairs in it? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Concrete? It's concrete, y'all, around. The, it? po the pool is concrete, but I yeah. think the steps were wooden. At that time were wooden. Mm -hmm. Wooden, yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting. We'll pull that back up. Yeah. Yeah. we will be careful pulling that thing up. Maybe anything down in there. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these kids, I don't even remember. Yeah, but the kitchen, it was amazing. Um, but can you imagine if you had this many kids in your... Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because some of these kids, their parents didn't come, but they made sure that these kids, kids were in church, in church and in Sunday school. Yeah. We had vacation Bible school, we, yeah. and and when we had vacation Bible school down there, the teachers from the school, school they came to talk. That's what yeah. Someone, someone, yeah, the yeah. teachers came and talked the vacation. Yeah, um, the teachers from Dunbar. Yeah, yeah, came and talked. Yeah, we had. Let me think. We had 
Miss McCray, she taught out in uh, Farmington. Yeah. Did they come because they were members of Mount Zion? These were members, members. of Mount Zion. And they Zion. came to teach the, the vacation Bible well, schools. Vacation Bible schools in summertime, so they were, At they Mount were available. Zion. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, they they were members of that church. Miss Doherty, uh, Anna McCray, uh, Anna McCray taught me in second grade. Uh, Tom Senior Doherty. Uh, Miss... Uh, what was her name? Irvin. She taught me in sixth grade. Oh, it was more of them than that. But they were just everyday people. Yeah. They they school teachers back then had a especially black uh, school teachers. They had a lot of uh, what do I want to say? We looked up to prestige. Prestige, yeah, but they didn't flaunt that. They yeah, were just, they, yeah. they work with everybody. They, yeah. you know, yeah, it's it's just amazing. This is Joni's mom and dad. Yeah, so there was a Smith era. They call it the Huffmans were another family that was. That's, um, this is uh, Daisy Smith. This her. That's Joni's mom and that's her dad. Wow. This is their, their family. family. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Huffmans. Okay. Yeah, and when we did this book. These like these pages, they bought these pages. Wow. Amazing. So this book made a lot of money. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. This and book is, is a treasure for history though, because yeah. if you don't compile it into something printed, yeah. it all dies off when the people You're right, go. you're yeah. right. The heart ends here. Yeah. Um, and I have uh that's uh Aretha's mom. That's really mm -hmm. wow. Willie okay. Dan and Rosalie. Wow. And this is Aretha's sister. Whoa, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Sister Smith, when they, um, what was it like, I guess, um, um, now, as you, when you guys are preparing um, and deciding to move, like 1987, when when um, Pastor Hickerson proposed that and you guys decided that, um, um, what was that like? And, and what was, when you finally, you guys processed and walked all the way there, what, what was that time period in that late 80s? Um, when Mount Zion was kind of, um, you were bursting out the seams. What, what, what was it that it feel like when you guys went there and marched up to the new um, 135 Maple? You talking about that day? Well, just that whole. I think it's, it was over a three or four year period that you guys were moving up to that in 1986. Okay, they started the building fund or '87 when uh, Hickerson proposed the plan. Mm -hmm. You didn't have all the money, by the way. We we're proposing to sell the old and then. Um, what you were doing the, the plan we it. didn't even know that we were going to sell that church yeah we had no idea we were just God just blessed us with those people who bought it yeah we had no idea like I, t I said a little bit ago we were going to have a mortgage that yeah. we were going to have to pay off wow. which meant that we were going to have to have fundraisers now that's something that we uh, they did all the time because money was so Nobody really had any. The coal yeah. miners had the most money of yeah. anybody in, in you know in our church. Because even the school teachers, they don't pay school teachers nothing now. Gotcha. Well, you know they weren't paying them then. I can attest to that. Yeah. <laughs> so but they they went to school and they they uh, we looked up to them because yeah. they were school teachers. Yeah. And and they they taught us even on the weekends. Wow. Hmm. Well, what did it but feel when like? we got ready to move from one church to the other. Yeah, what was that like? Uh -huh. it, the more they build on this church, and we would just go by there. Where that church is sitting right now used to be a beer garden and all that kind of stuff. You where, the, where 135 Maple is? Mm -hmm. Used okay. to be a what again? A beer garden. A What's beer. that? A joint? A joint. Okay. Yeah, a juke wow. joint. Wow. Yeah, Miss Veens. <laughs> Anybody remember Miss Veens? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, Bernie would remember Miss Veen. Uh, Miss Veen was. She was related to my mother's best friend's first husband. <laughs> she had two kids by 
Miss Bean's brother. And I never was, because we were little, I never was in Miss Bean's. But they said Miss Bean's was hopping. <laughs> but it was a house. It was a house, wow. Yeah, yeah, it was a house. And they, it was a joint. Because they had those all up, because the Melvins and the shoes that I was talking about and the Elks didn't come back, come by until later. Okay. <clears throat> the joints were in somebody's house. Really? Wow. Was yeah. it just that we're going over to so-and-so's tonight and that, that became the joint, or did they actually run a joint that, out of their place, out of their home? They would turn a, yeah. like a basement into a... Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Had, okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was an establishment. House party. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, you went there and you bought drinks just like you would at, in a, you know. But was it legal? I mean, did they have a license? Yes. It was? Yeah. Yeah. Gee, what They a... just would not, and license weren't as hard to come by. Uh. But, uh, yeah, they had license. It, it wasn't a thing that they were raided or anything like that. Uh -huh. They had license. Okay. But. But again, uh, back then, you're black, you didn't have a place. Know where to go, yeah, so they did that. Yeah. They let them have a license. So yeah. Had a place. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, that was, uh, and on the corner there, where that building, they just closed it, where, remember when Joe had his party? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that was another joint. That was the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you think of the name of the place now, I was little. And then in Lampkins, downstairs. Lampkins right across from that. Another place. joint? Yeah. yeah. In the yeah. funeral home? It was before it, the funeral home. <laughs> Yeah. No, the funeral was it, home was up there, but it was, was the down. Place? It was wow. downstairs. You go downstairs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but we were happy people. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we, that's all we had, and <laughs> you know, like I said, they integrated us because the government said it, and because it needed to be done. But we were okay. Yeah, we we were okay. We just wanted what everybody else wanted. We didn't want to, didn't want to, you know. We didn't have to mingle. We just wanted, and even people in the South would have said the same thing. Just make it equal. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm glad it's like it is. When they, when our boys went to West Side, <laughs> the black girls got mad at the. Black boys, because the black boys were going with the white girl. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> but the Bible said, doesn't it? Yeah. It doesn't. It? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Smith, I guess in, um, now that you're now that we're where we are in 2022, um, it's it's amazing because when you guys sold that uh, the individual, I won't say his name because now that bought it, it was enough to pay off what you guys would have had a mortgage for. So it's um, it's it it's mind-boggling in some that we just simply wanted to take the picture, and really we we want to take the picture to do what they did attempt to do what they did here by simply having a, a souvenir program for you guys, and it turned out being that we get back our original Mount Zion um, church back to, it gets it gets back to us but from I'm just the original that. buyer from the original buyer mm -hmm. 35 years almost now 35 years mm -hmm. later um, so um, 34 years um, later because that was 1988 when he said I think they got it you guys moved in 1989 I think. yeah um, did he ever say why they bought that church they well, needed what? the church they needed a church and they proposed the trustees um, proposed they were looking for a place um, the Greek Orthodox Church, and, yeah. um, and they proposed it, um, and then he got word of it, and the trustees actually went to his church, and he made an offer um, to them, and so we're, we were willing to actually sell, which was a blessing to Mount Zion, because now you guys, you know, didn't have to do as, I mean, though you still fundraise, you didn't have to do as much, because I, from my understanding, what we got from selling Mount Zion it was very close to helping us to pay for that church. Is mm -hmm. that, am I saying that correctly? Yeah. See, we had been paying on the church, yeah. paying the notes. But by the time they bought it, that took care of the rest of the mortgage. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that was, um, and that's really unheard of because that means you guys were able to really have a mortgage burning within less than five years almost 
Um, to, is that am I saying mm -hmm. that right? Mm -hmm. So because um, when he finally purchased it in '89 is when he got it. Um, he got it in '89, um, but you guys had already I think were had moved into the new mountain. Yes. Line. Yeah. So we had um, moved into moved it. in and started making mortgage payments. Yes. Then he, it, you know, the paperwork was was signed, and now who would have ever thought that we would be going back to the courthouse to take over right um the the mount zion so um but i'm just amazed at the the faith that you guys had mm -hmm. um and the, the, these individuals um as i look at just the the names i was going to show you some of these this others. lady right here that was that one was up on the bible mary joe walters, mary joe walters. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i'm just um and you know what i also noticed too um I notice on all these kids, with the exception of one or two, but they're like smiling like, and they just have this, this sense of pride about mm -hmm. um, not mm -hmm. just who they are, but the God we serve. Um, I mean, as if they're just really, even though they were, they, they went through a very difficult era in time Yeah. Uh, for us. It didn't, I mean, their faith, um, when we talk about singing, we've come this far by faith. Um, I, 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 I can hear almost these guys singing um these songs one of my favorites tis the old ship of zion mm -hmm. you know That's my um, dad's favorite was it yeah so when we just think of those songs nothing wrong with the songs that we sing today they're okay um and enjoy enjoy them too but i just when i just look through this book um and just look at the pictures and just the fellowship of the men and the women and um um it, it's it's just uh amazing and it's interesting. Our basement almost looks like that basement. Um, the, how it was built with the with the with the columns and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. The downstairs, mm -hmm. um, it's which is really interesting. Sister Merkinson, I don't think we mentioned her. Merk I think it's um, Eva Merkinson. Eva Merkinson. Um, we talked about the Dotteries, uh, Christina Miller, Gertrude Williams, um, James Williams, Emmett Huff, Virginia Kane. Um, I think you've told me about Daisy Smith before. Yeah. Yeah. Told me about her. Um, I'm just amazed at um, um, anything that you could share, um, words of wisdom you can share that you would impart. Um, um, I believe that Mount Zion um, 501, I, I'm excited about what God has done and we're standing on their shoulders. Um, they made tremendous sacrifices for us and they endured hard times. Yeah. And so, um, what would you say? But, you know, they were happy people. Yeah, yeah. They, they were very happy. What do you mean by that? They were, are we not happy people? <laughs> That's okay. You can tell. We can edit this part and, uh, and just keep this it's our own. It's different now. Oh, yeah. People are not happy now because they're so attitudinal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Every, mean, everybody that? walks around with a chip on their shoulder, yeah. even in church. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Even in church. Yeah. Uh, I've been sitting in church and, and, you know, turned to look at somebody and, why are you so frowned? You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a happy place. Yeah. And, you know, I, I truly believe that some people have such a rough time in life. Yeah, yeah. Because they're not serving God. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's, it's, I just don't know what the world is coming to. Yeah. I just do not know what the world is coming to. I want to show you my mother. That's my mom. Oh my gosh, wow. My mother made all of our clothes. I, I remember my mother making that dress. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. She made all of our uh, clothes. And my dad had a sister in Detroit. And <clears throat> they had lost each other for many, many years. And I don't know the story on how they found each other. Because she was in Detroit. And he was uh, from Alabama here. He came here after my mother came because my uncle sent for my mother to come and take care of my aunt, who was my blood aunt. Mm -hmm. And uh, my uncle worked in the mines. And after she died, my dad uh, came to West Virginia. 
and my uncle worked in the mines and he thought my dad was going my dad was scared of the mines. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he did he just it was not a fit for the mines. Because my dad had worked in the steel mills mm -hmm. in Alabama, mm -hmm. which was a good job, but it wasn't a good job. No, nobody's paying anything, in other words. But anyway, that's how my dad uh, got here. And it was a struggle <clears throat> for them because eventually there was five of us kids. Mm -hmm. And at one time, it was five of us in four rooms <laughs> when my dad build, started building this house. And the way my dad paid for this, this property up here is selling the timber yeah. off of the, of the land. Yeah, and that's how he paid for it. Uh, wow. And he just scrapped to put this house together. He, he would get over with money, he'd go buy a block. You know, mm -hmm. stuff like until he got it to the point. It was different. I, I've changed all of this in here. But <clears throat> it was different because that door wasn't there. At one time yeah. when we first moved in here, the upstairs wasn't there. And we were all here. This was a big bedroom. Okay. It, it was two big double beds here. And mm -hmm. Lewis's room was back over here where <laughs> the pantry is. <laughs> and... and uh, <clears throat> Over the years, you know, uh, in, when I was getting ready to, uh, I wanted to redo the kitchen. Now, when my mom moved in here, she wanted, uh, maybe you remember the Youngstown kitchen. It was a white oh, metal goodness. cabinets. Oh, white metal cabinets. Yeah. I had and, those in the house of Virginia. <laughs> yeah. And she, all, that was her dream. <clears throat> that was the best room in the house yeah <laughs> kitchen the kitchen yeah yeah but anyway in later years you know those cabinets rust and you know yeah. so I, I told my dad I was working and I came back home when my husband died and I was going to go back to Texas my mother asked me not to go back which is why I'm still here <laughs> <laughs> we're glad you're here yeah <laughs> well I'm, I'm glad I'm here too now but anyway, Denise was 15 months old when I came from Texas. And then Denise became Lewis's child, and that's history. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> I told my dad one day, I said, Dad, I'm going to, uh, I want to remodel the kitchen. Kitchen is fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come back later on. I told and I had, my mom and I had already discussed it. You know, my dad was proud yeah. because he built this, and he would call it this shanty on this hill. Mm. And his dream, and he thought, as most black men back then, <clears throat> your kids gonna be here forever. Mm -hmm, they, mm -hmm. they didn't. They didn't have a vision that your kids gonna get grown and, yeah. and move out and try to do better for themselves and whatnot. This was what he built, and he wanted it to stay yeah. that way. And my dad never saw this downstairs, because when they did redid this, they had, they tore everything back to the blocks mm -hmm. and brought it back up again. <clears throat> he never saw it because he was upstairs, and uh, he could hear the noise, but he was sick, mm -hmm. and he passed away before we uh, we got it done. But me and him fought over that kitchen. <laughs> 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 so finally my mother said look she called him Bunch we need a new kitchen if you want me to continue to cook and you want me to keep cooking in here we gotta get a new kitchen <laughs> okay girl that's what he called a girl uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so we we got the kitchen done and then gradually I got you know stuff changed around in here and like I said, he didn't see this part of it, but uh, I just tried to make it comfortable for them. Yeah. And uh, I don't, I don't regret any of it. You know, just everybody took care of my parents. All of us did. Is there any words you would say to? That's my mother right there. Look at that hat. I, oh my gosh! We gotta show Sister Greg that hat. Oh God! Yeah, yeah. Woo! <laughs> Ooh, yeah. My sister's got uh, this is uh, um, 
um, I remember because I I've done some. This is um, um, her her name is Deal, but the Washingtons, um, Eva I met and Mary Walker, their sisters. They were. This is one that just died here. Yeah. Not too long ago, Mary. Yeah. Yeah. Mary died after after Geneva. Yeah, yeah I, I eulogized yeah. them both. Yes. I, um, yeah. The, um, um, Mary was yeah. The one was first, and then yeah, Eva White, did, and then later came Jeanette. Jeanette, Jeanette yeah, yeah. Jeanette. They're the Turner sisters. Yeah. yeah. And Miss Eva Washington. Yeah. All of those. Are her. And you said she was a very staunch, very active. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah. All of these women are active. All of them were active. There's one picture in there I want to ask you about. Here's just a Washington. This is the one I recently eulogized. Well, that's last year. The the, um, the mother and um, the, the sisters. The sisters, yeah, these two. This is the one who's. This yeah. is the one whose daughter, daughter was up in uh, Bridgeport. Yeah. Bridgeport. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Geneva was the one Geneva, that lived yeah, right. in the lower part of the state. Lower state. Yeah. Let me uh, just. Oh, if you don't mind, I have, I'll keep my finger there in case you want to go back. Oh, then there's some. Drawings. Tell me about this. That's uh, that's an unusual outfit. <laughs> He's a biker. Okay. Uh, that's uh, Lawrence's brother. Is it? Yeah, Lawrence Harton's brother. That's it. his mom and dad there. I didn't know him. I, I recognize it as something unique, but I didn't know, you know, what it... Yeah, as far as I know, he was a biker, and I think he lived in, in Chicago. Okay. Yeah. One of the family members for... A this is the one, yeah. he and I went to school, we were in the same class, Phil. Well, Phil, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is Mary Jo, she was in my husband's class. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he lived in Chicago, I didn't know him, but he was a biker. If you had seen my brother in all of his colors. <laughs> yeah, I figured they were. My brother's helmet sitting right there. Wow. It's been there since he died. Really? Yeah. So, yeah. Smith, what words would you say to, what, not that they're parting words, but words of wisdom you would give to um, Mount Zion. We'll be, a, we'll be coming to our 121st year. Um, when and you don't guys call were, me to say nothing. I, <laughs> I'm telling you now, I, I got a witness. <laughs> yeah, we already have you planned on the program, but um, <laughs> and the pew designated for you because you guys had a certain spot where you sat. So. <laughs> what do you any 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 words of wisdom about keeping the faith and what you would lead them um, or say to um, say to our our current Mount Zion and. Even those who have children in our future, what what would you say that? You know what I would really like to see the people that we have just take an interest, yeah. and you know, be there, yeah. and and it take people to work together to keep the church together. Yeah, and while. You rip and run around. I've never seen, and I've said this to you, <clears throat> a preacher rip and run. Preachers do things, but some of the things that you do, other people did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Absolutely. absolutely. They yeah. absolutely did these things. And the preacher was there, but he didn't have all this work to do that, that you're doing. And it should not be that way. And I don't, I told Janice today, I don't know how to change it. Because people don't want to change. People want to come to church when they get ready to come to church. They want to come when there's something big going on and they can, you know, you weren't there to prepare for whatever it is. You weren't there to do the work. Hollis and I used to have the same <laughs> conversation. I said, here we go again, Hollis. We go to Sam, we plan the menu, we go to Sam, we buy the food, we come back, we put it away, we go back the next day, start prepping for it, and cook. 
Everybody and then came. clean up. And I, I used to think that when we come to dinners and you'd invite us. I said, well, I, well, I, you know, I hate to come and, and if you aren't counting on X number of people because there's work that went on for this. Nice. For Absolutely. people to come and enjoy it. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of work. And we couldn't get, even at that point, we had some younger women in there. These women weren't interested in learning how to cook. And it's different when you're cooking for oh, gosh, yeah. a lot of people yeah. rather than cooking for your family. Yeah. And you need to learn how to, to, to uh, you know, do this, how, how much to buy and what to cook, how to cook it. You know, we couldn't get... And Hollis and I learned from our parents down in Old Mount Zion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In that basement, else, we'll basement the kitchen over there? Yeah, the basement that, kitchen. That yeah. basement kitchen that in... Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, absolutely. Did they eat down there too? Did yes. they have... Yeah, they absolutely. Had, they, yeah. All their meals were there. And that yep. old... They had tables they were set. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. We, we ate down there, we cooked down there, and we didn't go to the grocery store to buy the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was told. <laughs> Tell them how we get the chicken. We fried it. They would buy <coughs> the raw chicken, and my mother and I, and I mean those women down there, would clean the chicken, and they would fry it in these big iron skillets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cast iron. Yeah, that's fried chicken. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got some skillets in there right now. Yeah, these kids don't know how to do that. The average woman in her kitchen right now don't know how to fry. How to fry Chicken. Can't bake a turkey. <laughs> We're out working. I worked. I know. Every day. 35 years. 37 years because I went to work for another it, company. But you know that fast food came in. It's so easy to run by and grab one. You know. I told somebody, and this is the truth, I didn't get to McDonald's. I was grown when I went to McDonald's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We did not we didn't have the money yeah. to go buy fast food. Well, when Kentucky Fried Chicken came in, my dad loved it. <laughs> but he thought he was doing my mom a favor. Mm -hmm. He said, girl, don't worry about the chicken. I'll go over to Kentucky Fried and get a bucket of chicken. And that's what he would do. Trying to keep my mother from, from having to do all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mother would start cooking on Saturday yeah. or early Sunday morning before we get we would get up and every Saturday my mother would take a 25 pound bag of flour and she would make rolls she oh would make loaves she would make cinnamon rolls we get up on Saturday morning the whole house would smell so good 25 pounds a lot of flour it lasts us with five of us now mm. with them yeah. And my cousin, who yeah. was here most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody come, they, you know, just find a place to sleep. And you stay. Yeah. And my mother raised my uh, my uh, one cousin. <coughs> but anyway, she would do this every Saturday morning. Yeah. Cook, and that bread would smell so, and she could make bread, I'm telling you. And that was... Yeast from scratch bread. That wasn't yes, ma'am. Yeah. Where she was kneading it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let it rise. Yeah. yeah. My mother made ice cream. Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. And we would churn. <laughs> we would take turns because we knew when we got that ice cream hard enough, we would sit down and eat ice cream. Now my niece is making money on my mother's ice cream. Is recipe. she really? She, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Got, yep. In Dallas. Well, I mean, she got a uh, brand and, and everything? Huh? I mean, she, you can go to the store and buy her ice cream? She, yeah. What is yeah. it? Yeah. What is it? Yeah. What's the brand? Uh, what's she called? 1848 Patra Lee, which is my grandmother's P -A -T -R -A -L -E. name. P-A-T-R-A-L-E-E? P-A-T-R-A-L-E-E. One word? Kitchen. Patra, Patra Lee. Lee. Kitchen. Two. Yeah. Two, Two words. words. Patra Lee Kitchen. Mm -hmm. I'll give you the thing in there. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Yep. Well, Makes she, ice cream. What's your Smith? We're gonna we're gonna go to Sister Lacey now. <laughs> she <laughs> tell Joan I didn't keep you here. Yeah. You stay. This is amazing, though. Um, man, I'm, I'm I'm excited and um, the connections. She's from Alabama. That girl could say. 
That's um, <laughs> Daisy, is, isn't it? No, that, that's that's May Berta Huff. Oh, May Berta Huff. And okay. she she married Emmett. Emmett wow. lived here. She came here. Miss Betty Johnson, who played the piano, <laughs> was her aunt. Oh, I got a question. Did you have just piano, or did you have other instruments? The organ came when Reverend Hickerson, okay. had because organ. he played. Okay. That no hand. drums, horns, oh, no. none of that stuff. Okay. No, no. We had the uh, the organ and the choir, the terrestrial choir. choir. We raised the money to pay for that organ. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But uh, and um, tell them about um, Sister Fox's husband who played Doctor Mr. Dewey. <laughs> Tell about Dewey him. Fox. Dewey Fox. He was tell about him. to stop. Yeah, tell me how, how long he played, though. Um, oh. um, he, he died at 106, six. I think. That's yeah. Mother Fox's husband? Really? Yeah, yeah. Ooh, but I don't know if he was tall. She was taller than he was, I believe. Really? Yeah, yeah. you know how short she <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> she was so But cute. he played like he he was older, and he, he was educated. Yeah, he was educated they said, yeah. 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 Uh, but he he played real slow, you know. Uh -huh. But the organ became his. If somebody changed something, the keys on it or something like that, uh -huh. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fox. Mr. Fox. Yeah. yeah. But he played for like, quite a few years, though. Yeah, he did. He did. And Miss Betty Johnson. Miss Betty was there when I was a kid, till I was grown. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Miss Betty stayed at the top of Monroe Street, and sometime when we would come from school, and we call, we would come up Monroe Street and come across the hill over to here. Yeah. And uh, we would stop at her house uh, and practice our little songs. Wow. And then we would come home. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's it's, a, it's amazing. I won't say anything else. Like the 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 members. They stayed at Mount Zion. It's a little um, our our in the last probably thirty years, um, individuals they don't. It's um, like people stand on jobs. No one's um, these individuals. What loved me about them is I watch after they you guys came up here. Your kids came to Mount Zion. Your grandkids came to Mount Zion. Your and, family. Uh, your came. family came to Mount Zion, yes. which is different now. Yeah, yeah. We're seeing so many people go just. Moving around so much, mm -hmm. um, whereas I love that you guys, they planted some really deep roots in Mount Zion. So yeah. um, you don't get to be that many years old. Um, when I look at the stained glass windows, we don't even have the stained glass windows compared to the Mount, the Mount Zion 501 Cleveland Avenue. But when I look at uh, the pictures, it just it, I think of a, a big oak tree with deep roots. Yeah. Yes. You know, with deep yeah. roots that's not going to be moved. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, this is downstairs. Yeah. Oh yeah. You see the yeah, 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 yeah. You can yeah. see, yeah. Yeah. It's 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 a, it's amazing um what they did, even down to the to the steps. So Yep. Now these steps really look wider than they Yeah, yeah. Well the they 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 they're, they're gonna be working on those steps. I know that. So make sure they put some lights in there. Yeah, they got yeah, they're gonna have to add a lot more lights. Um That's Hattie Rogers, that's Gloria really, that's Rogers. Gloria. It looked just like it from the oh mm -hmm. my gosh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just um. This was little baby. She had a sister, a twin sister, and she was big baby and little baby. No, <laughs> that's Percy Strickland's wife, right really? there. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, her sister lived in. Was it Detroit? Or she didn't live here. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. That's Mrs. Doherty. That's Miss Neighbors. Miss Neighbors lived up on uh, Monroe Street too. Her husband was really into the church too. Wow. I read some things in some of the old newspapers in the, uh, before 1920. They had a couple like picnics or uh, they called them something else, uh, 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 some kind of crazy word, on Monroe Street. So there must have been a lot of members that lived over there. There was, or, yeah. yeah. And years ago, uh, Pastor, we had what we call the, uh, we call it the Sunday school picnic. picnic yeah. And I'm sure somebody's told you about yes. it. Yes. Yeah, we're all all the of the black churches. Mm-hmm. With and they had the old city line buses in Fairmont, the great big old buses. Mm -hmm. The churches would uh, uh, hire these buses, mm -hmm. and they would go out and pick up, you know, even like Bearville, Grant Town, mm -hmm. and people who ever lived in Fairmont. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. would come. It was a big family reunion. Where did they have that? Morris Park. Okay. Morris okay. Park, yeah. And that was all the churches, not just yeah. just Mount Zion. All, all of the black churches. Black churches, yeah. 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 They still do it, don't they? Nope. No, no. 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 They haven't done it in years. It's been They attempted to do it years. about... about um, right before we had the COVID with them, um, yes. and then they decided not to. Yes. We yeah. got together right before yeah. COVID, and we were very yeah. we were this close. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. Uh, they pulled out. Yeah. Just yeah so this is Pastor McKinney, who yeah, pastored true. almost 10 years. He's actually in the old Mount Zion here. Did he have, yeah, he was, was he a deacon then. Wow. Okay. Really? Mm -hmm. So, how, how long? He's been at Mount Zion for a while then. Yeah. Um, I can't tell you how long. He was a deacon for a long time in uh, oh, Mount God. Zion. That explains he was, why he was. Yeah, yeah, I saw. Yeah, yeah. well, I didn't realize he was there that long. So oh yeah, really? Yeah, he sang in the choir. He oh yeah. We can sing your beautiful voice. Beautiful voice. Yeah. yeah. So he was a deacon for a while before he became. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, long time before he became a preacher. And then he got his calling because then he's he's Pastor McKinney is another really great the visionary. This is what his. His vision was the yes. his other building, mm -hmm. but God had different plans for us. We, yes. we didn't have to, that would have cost us, but um, yeah, we still didn't get for that, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, which was really interesting. I saw. Um, um, I'm That's speaking. the Lord. Oh, that sure is. Mm -hmm. And the Davisons, we would be remiss. We are going to do a clip of the Davisons. Uh, nine, uh, seventy-two years of being married. There, he's ninety-eight. She's 91, mm -hmm. and um, that's just amazing. Yeah, so she was a trustee. Yeah, she yeah she was a trustee. Did she come with you or after you? Much l later than me. Wow. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. Wow. Yeah. Much yep. later. Okay. So, um, well, I'm gonna save some battery if, if she got some battery. I got a little. Uh, yeah, I got a little battery. We we you go sign off. Is yes, it? Yes. Huh? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Smith. Thank you, okay. Sister Smith. Ask me anything when you see me pass. Well, we'll come back. Yeah, we'll, we will definitely come I back. I find my book like this upstairs yeah. in the office. Okay, I'm yeah. going to turn this off. Okay. okay. Say